are joined right now by the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate seat here in New Jersey, Steve Lonigan. Mayor, good of you to come on back. Congratulations. It must have been quite a night for you. It was very exciting, Mike. Thank you. With, you know, big victory, bigger mm -hmm. than the polls had predicted. Mm -hmm. Turnout, though, uh, the, on the Democratic side, they're saying it was a, a substantial turnout. On the Republican side, they're saying it was a, a small turnout. Well, the Democrats spent a lot of money on turning out their base, and we did spend money, too, but we still had a terrific energized base come out. We saw that last night at our, our campaign victory party. The, the room was packed. The energy was, was off the chart. Your speech, I mean, Patrick Henry was right in there. Give me liberty or give me death. When he said those words, he was taking on King George. That's he right. was taking on a foreign power mm -hmm. that was not allowing Americans to exercise their democratic rights. You're certainly not equating this situation with that situation. He was taking on a foreign power that was using general warrants to go into the homes of colonists and go into their papers and their personal effects and their houses to collect data, what we now call data. And that's what you're seeing happening in this country right now with the NSA and the IRS. So yes, in many, many ways, our Constitution is on the line and so is our Bill of Rights. And that this election is going to be very much focused on those issues. And you don't think Booker would defend them the way you would like to defend them. Oh, no, I don't. There's a clear line in the sand difference between me and Cory Booker. Cory Booker is an advocate, a devotee of bigger government, more spending, more debt. I'm exactly the opposite. I want to cut the size of government. I want to return to a limited government, which uh, enables Americans to reach their unlimited uh, abilities. You were uh, running against him pretty much from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's face it. Uh, you know, the campaign has portrayed him as an absentee mayor and as a celebrity mayor. Uh, the, the, the Variety headline about him being a Hollywood favorite, your campaign is already having some fun with, I understand, mm -hmm. as well. Do you really see him that way? Well, his Democrat opponents did in the primary, as well as do we in the rest of the state. And uh, it's, it's not really as much fun for me to do this as deeply concerning that we have these Hollywood elite stepping down and you know, descending from their uh, penthouse apartments at the Bel Air Hotel in the, the heights of Hollywood Hills to tell New Jersey who the next senator is going to be. Well, we've got a governor here who's something of a celebrity in his own right, too. Have you heard from Governor Christie? Yes, I have. The governor called me last night, left me a terrific message while I was up on stage, and I've been going back and forth with his staff today. And, we're gonna, and I spoke, by the way, today with Jeff Keyes at length, mm. the senator, senator right. who's going to be you know, helping as well. He said he would endorse... Uh, the Republican nominee. Have you gotten his endorsement as well? Senator Chiesa? Yes. Yeah, the phone call today was about his endorsement okay. and coming in and doing events. So the, the, it was a terrific call, and the governor's call last night was terrific too. So as soon as we can connect, I'm sure we're going to be off to the races. I'm looking forward to, to, to campaigning with Governor Christie, with Senator Chiesa, with the entire Republican Party. Let me ask you something about Dr. Eck, your opponent. You beat her by, what was it, 60 some odd points. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, you were quoted as saying that she had, was offered to uh, join your campaign as an advisor of sorts. There was an article today, and we just spoke to her just before this interview, where she said she really didn't offer that as well. Can you clarify your understanding uh, well, of Dr. Eck? We, we spoke last night. I got a nice call from Dr. Eck, and I uh, thanked her very much for the, the call and asked her if she would you know, come on board and advise me on her health care knowledge to help round out my, um, my talking points, and she, she said she would. So I She told her. us, uh, I'll give you the quote, that the tenor of, of your campaign is, is different from what she feels comfortable with. What, what, does that bother you at all? Um, I, no. I mean, if her tenor was better, she would have won. So. And, and the other thing that, that she also said is that she, would, she would, wouldn't be quite comfortable um, on, the, on the campaign trail, enthusiastically on the campaign trail with you. Are there some lingering issue differences there, or is it a matter of personality? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Why did she, I mean, you've been for years a, a kind of symbolic with conservative politics and, and uh, identify with the Tea Party as well. Mm -hmm. You didn't get the endorsements from two organizations. She did. Why was that? You'd have to ask them. I mean, one of them, I think, was from out of the state of New Jersey. Were you surprised by that, though? No. There's all kinds of different people out there. No, nothing in politics surprises me, Mike. All I know is I have to focus on beating Cory Booker because this race in New Jersey is going to define uh, the U.S. Senate races for 2014. The whole country is going to be watching our race. I'm committed to, uh, to fighting it out on the issues that are affecting this state and this nation. That's what's important to me. And the reason I bring this up, though, is you know far better than I. In order for you to do this in a state that is, hasn't elected a Republican to this seat in, what, 40 years, you've got to pull all elements of your party together. 
from, from the Tea Party folks to the conservative activists to the, the, country, uh, the old, what we used to call the country club Republicans. How are you going to do all that? Uh, we're already doing it. I mean, you're seeing it already in the vote that came out yesterday and the energy on the ground and the people that are raising money for me that are stepping up to the plate that are energized about recognizing one thing. The opposition is on the other side of the battlefield. The other thing we have to do, Mike, is we have to cleave off those conservative Democrats that we used to call Re Reagan Democrats uh, and bring them over with our message of limited government uh, and, 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 and privacy in the do, Bill of Rights. Do you Rights. think that many of of the Democrats who are supporting the governor in his re-election bid are the kinds of Democrats that you can win for yourself? To some extent, but there's, there's other nuances when you're on the federal level. There's issues of constitutional rights, of uh, you know, Second Amendment rights. You know, you have a, I'm, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment. I know you're not supposed to say that, right? They actually get up on TV and say, I support the Second Amendment. But if you ever go to gun ranges on Saturdays, you're going to find a lot of Democrat union guys there who love to shoot on the weekends. I'm going to preserve their rights. That's important to them. You, you know, I, I'm pro-life. Cory Booker is an advocate, a major pro-abortion candidate, and he made that very clear last night. So there's a lot of, you know, good, solid union men and women who are pro-life. They're going to be with me in this election. A lot of analysts say this is a really uh, an opportunity for New Jersey to witness a real good idea and issue campaign. Clearly. Ac across the board on every issue, we're on the opposite sides of the spectrum. Cory Booker made it very clear last night that his three biggest issues in this race are gay marriage, abortion, and raising the minimum wage to $10.15 an hour. That would destroy every small business in the state of New Jersey. If you're a small business and they raise the minimum wage some 30%, you might as well close your doors and go home. Cory Booker has no idea what it is to run a business. Um, he's never built a real business, and I have. I know how tough it is out there to build a business, and we need to return to small business, not big government, uh, and the values on which this country was built. That's what this election is about. Mayor Lonigan, have to leave it there. We will talk some more, sir. Thank you for coming in, and congratulations once again. Thanks, Mike.